Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we're going to be looking at a Hmong crossbow from Southeastern Asia. The Hmong people don't have a country today, but they are a minority in southwestern China, in Vietnam, Laos, um, Thailand, and some immigrants in Western in the Western world. And this is one of their uh, crossbow designs. But there are also other kinds of crossbows in Southeastern Asia, like the Monogar crossbow. Most of the crossbow prods are not made of horn, but rather bamboo and wood. And this is simply due to the climate of Southeastern Asia being a lot more humid. Horn is a pretty not ideal material um, for that kind of uh, climate. So bamboo and wood would be more suitable in these situations. And bamboo is very abundant in that region. So, uh, you know, if the bamboo breaks, you can just get another one very quickly. But horn is very difficult to replace in that region. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on the Hmong crossbow. In Southeastern Asia, there's a wide variety of trigger designs, but they fall in a few categories. The first one is the simple groove trigger where you put a string onto a groove and then you use various ways of flicking the string up. Of course, with a light draw away, you can just flip it with your finger, but um, something heavier, you would have to use a lever and you push down and that will allow you to uh, shoot it. So as demonstrated, I span this <coughs> and then put a bolt. You move the bolt a little bit forward and my cardboard target's right there. And <laughs> there you go, I shoot the bolt. So this is a very, very, very simple trigger. And if you remove the lever, you can actually just flip it with your, with your finger, if your finger is strong enough or the draw weight's light enough. But this has about 50 pounds of draw weight, shooting with a power stroke of roughly, roughly four inches of, draw, uh, of power stroke. So it's not a very powerful bow. Um, and, uh, but you're also using corals that are very, very light. This is not like a medieval European coral. The jewels on this is very light, the, the, the amount of kinetic energy. So often you'll see these being used with poison and poison is very abundant in that region in Southeastern Asia. So um, of course it makes sense that they would use this, um, you know, in Vietnam and uh, Thailand region. Another uh, design where you see in the repeating crossbows um, is that there's this pin underneath and you just push up with that pin and you also see that in the Scandinavian designs in uh, uh, For example the skein crossbow. I made a reproduction on that um, As well, it's just a pin and then you have a lever you push the lever up and then there's another trigger design I see in Southeastern Asia where you have the Montagar tilt trigger the T trigger which is a basically a T um, and you there's a long lever here and you push the lever and then the, the the t will tilt allowing you to release the mechanism for uh, the montagard uh, people uh, i can make a specific video on this if you're interested um, but today's video is going to be focusing on the mong design or the side lever trigger design um, and of course you got to keep in mind these are not limited to just the mong people um, they're shared among many different ethnic groups in that region uh, for example, the Li Su also have a similar trigger design. Um, also in Eastern India, you also see similar trigger designs as well. So this is not limited to the Hmong people. Um, so just keep that in mind. I can't make this in the jungles of Vietnam with my bare hands, right? If I'm gonna have to make something for survival, I would probably make it this kind of trigger design as I can actually do it with just a knife. So keep in mind that these were used in Southeastern Asia, um, but they're much harder to make and you do need um, skilled craftsmen, which they did have to make these complicated trigger mechanisms. But the simpler trigger mechanism also existed, especially in the hill tribes. One thing you have to pay attention to these triggers is that they typically, you have to put the coral a lot more forward about a few inches from the groove. You can't put the coral right at the groove because if you do that, there's a good chance that the string will skip up and partially hit the groove 
uh, the bolt, which will cause a misfire, partial fire, or an inaccurate fire. It's good to get a few inches up, and there's a sweet spot, and a skilled person would know exactly where to make this. Um, and here it's set about here, so it's almost like halfway the power stroke. Um, now, I don't know if how that would affect the speed. I'm sure um, if you put it too far away, then the speed would be a lot slower. Um, I mean, if you put this the coral here, the string would never hit the bolt. So there's a nice sweet spot of where you put it. Now, I do wish there's more testing on this, and I haven't. I don't have a chronograph with me to test um, where the optimal bolt location is, and I'm sure it would affect the the velocity of the bolt. So it's good to find out where that sweet spot is, but I haven't done any calculations or testing on that. In the European designs. Um, you can actually put it a lot closer to the groove as long as you have a bolt holder um, typically made of antler or a piece of wood which just holds the bolt and you see that in the European or the Renaissance crossbow designs. So I just want to show you that these are designed to be used as two-handed crossbows and the reason is uh, you can't really aim effectively one-handed. When you pull the trigger your thumbs actually blocking your sight picture so you can't actually aim effectively um, unless you try to tilt it again, like gangster style, like this, uh, but we don't have any evidence of them tilting it like this. So in order to shoot this, you want to use two hands because with your left hand, you're holding the crossbow. Now I can freely move my hand away so that I get a sight picture and now I can shoot it because now I have the clearance, the sight picture to aim at whatever I'm aiming at and pull the trigger. Um, if you just use it one hand, your thumb is blocking the view. So you could not aim and just try to guess where it is. Um, or um, I'm sure there's ways to design things around it, but this specific one is designed to be used uh, with two hands. So now that I talked about the trigger, I want to show you uh, the bow. Of course, the original bow is made of just a simple piece of bamboo, but my reproduction is two pieces of bamboo and then bundled together with hemp wrapped on. Um, and then the string is a Dacron string because it's a reproduction, but the original strings are made of plant fibers. And then you typically don't see these with stirrups, but I mean rope stirrups, but sometimes you do see them with uh, stirrups, especially with the Montegard ones. I also see them with uh, these kind of rope stirrups. Um, and they're just simple strings so you can span this thing without sitting on your butt. And then this thing, I think is just for decoration, but also you can hook it onto something. But the, the, stir, the rope can also do that, but this also allows you to hook it onto something. Um, uh, so, so it's more secure. For example, a tree branch, you can actually lock it onto a tree branch to, uh, to be more accurate if you want. Um, but I think this is mainly for decoration purposes, um, but also to hang it on a wall. Um, and that's it. What, to fix the prod, they usually just cut, cut a slot in, in the original wood uh, and you insert the prod. And of course the prods are typically made of bamboo, but I've also seen them with hardwood. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video.